and it's a good morning on the Sexy Aging Podcast. I'm your host Tracy Minuknuku and I'm excited to welcome to the podcast today Kate Codrington and Kate is in the UK. I'm just going to share a little bit about Kate and then of course you guys if you've listened to episodes before I really really enjoy when the guest just tells us a little bit about their background. Well a lot about their background because <laughs> this is a story about them. So um, this is exciting. I have a whole list of things that Kate is an expert in. So she's a therapist, a menstrual and menopause mentor, a speaker and a workshop facilitator, podcaster of life is an inside job. Is that correct? Life and uh -huh. inside job, right? That is so yep. cool. And the author of The Second Spring, which is freaking exciting. There have been um, a plethora of um, books that have come out quite recently, both here in New Zealand and the UK, that celebrate and talk about the menopause transition in, a, I must say, a very positive way. Like I've, I've read quite a few books. I interviewed yesterday an author from New Zealand um, for um, This Changes Everything, Nikki Bazant. It was, it's an excellent book. It's gone to number one in New Zealand, actually. Oh, very cool. And it really does highlight for women going through the menopause transition. Oh, hey, yeah, here's all the, the shitty things that go on. And here's what we can do. And here's the cool part. And I think this is what I'm looking forward to talking with you about, Kate. So, okay, with all those things that you do, those services that you provide and the way that you help humans in the world, how mm -hmm. did you sort of get into what you're doing, the writing? And you do yoga as well. So how did that all come together? Well, first of all, I'm going to really wind back and kind of take apart this thing about being an expert, because that's <laughs> not what I am. What I've, um, I have 30 years experience as a therapist. And I have, you know, like shed, shit loads of training and, <laughs> and stuff. But I think it gets really tricky when people set themselves up as experts who know stuff and deliver information about what you should do with your body. So what I am is a person who holds space for, and I have, you know, a certain amount of knowledge, but I have, I hold space for people to find their own way. And I think that is a very different angle because an expert holds the authority and because we're human and we, we like to be told what to do, we're like, oh, please give me a path. Give me, can you please mm. give me a direction and tell me what to do so that to make this pain go away? then, you know, I can say, well, here's my three point plan to do A, B and C. But that that might help that might help you take whatever pain you have away. But that doesn't help you grow as a person that doesn't give you more of yourself. So my general job title is a, a chief validator. Oh, <laughs> I love it. My job, well, my job is to validate your experience. To, to remind you what you already know, that your feelings are real, to remind you that you already know what soothes you, what your self-care is. Probably you should be eating like your grandma did. Whatever your culture, she probably ate better than you. She probably ate less junk yeah. and drank, drank less Prosecco and you know that kind yeah. of thing. And worked harder to get that food as well. And you worked know? harder. Yeah, she 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 would doubtless be had been like walking. <laughs> yeah, and walking to the shops and yeah, you know, and going to the garden would, and, and yeah. growing the food. Yeah, all yeah, of that, if, right? Yeah. 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 Whatever you know, whether she was in a, living in an urban or a rural environment, there would have been more activity and all that kind of thing. So, so yeah. So I yeah I know some stuff, but my job is to remind is to gently and lovingly give people back their authority because we know what we need really it's just that it's very noisy it's very very noisy out there and god love google but you know we can always get answers but that takes us away from what we already know for ourselves yeah hey actually what you're saying is really resonating with me right now so some people would consider me an expert in the fitness industry 30 years women's health fitness wellness but I am actually start, my mind is shifting. What you talk about is um, just everybody should intrinsically kind of know what works for them. And we are finding more and more conversations in the fitness industry that is, that is aligning with 
this doesn't work for everyone. Everybody's body is different. And of course, when you get to the menopause transition, whoa, hey, it's a real landmine. You know, like there are, what, 35 plus known symptoms and everyone's path and journey is completely different. So you can't cookie cut a product or a fitness training program or a nutrition program and say, oh, this is going to work for you. There are some general things that are good for most people, but I've actually had to mentally shift and dial back and go and just be really open and empathetic to everyone's completely unique experience now. So I, I agree with what you've said, and it is quite a mind shift, you know, and a good one. Okay. Yeah. So what can help? Because there's so much there that we yeah. <laughs> so much that I was like, oh my God, where do which, we start? Which where lovely we... road, which lovely road do we go down? <laughs> but I think that the really a really useful thing, and if I had a bell, I'd ring it now. Ding. <laughs> is the, the central the central pole, the guidance that menopause and perimenopause gives us is that our task is to let go. Right? Well, I so haven't heard that we, one. <laughs> so help me out. Where are we going with this? <laughs> okay. Okay. So fitness. If you are a really try hard, I have to do so many reps and I have to run so many miles, you know, all that kind of that. If that's your mindset, mm. then you are required to let that go and connect with your body and softness. If you're someone who is, has a really kind of, um, uh, how can I say, like, uh, spent a lot of time on the sofa and is very, like, uh, static Then and has beliefs about, well, my body doesn't work and I can't move, then you are required to let that go. If you, it's about, it's very much about identity changing, like, all mm. our identities get challenged, right? I'm a competent person who's really good at work, who knows all this stuff, who can hold, I can hold myself together. That's a great one that nearly all of us are required to let go because no, we can't Yeah. because we are vulnerable humans and we are required to be vulnerable as we go through this transition. And we hate that. We, yes, we absolutely so hard. hate it. But Very you hard. Know, don't worry, Brene Brown's done all the work. Off you go, read Brene Brown. She'll tell you why vulnerability is a good thing, right? You know, that's read her it. thing. <laughs> And probably everybody listening will have encountered that. Yeah. So we know that that's what I mean. We know this stuff. We resist it like hell, but we already know that being a completely armored, holding it together person who's been working harder and harder and harder and harder over their 20s and 30s and 40s and maybe into their 50s as well and taking on more and more stuff, we know what that has brought us to. That's brought us to nearly breaking point. So yeah. how do you want to spend the rest of your life? Oh, I've got my pointy finger out. Here we go. It's eight <laughs> o'clock in the morning in the UK and I'm already ranting away. You know, how do you want, how do you want to spend your 60s and 70s and hopefully your 80s? Do you want to spend them doing more and more and getting more and more armored? Mm. And running out of juice because this stuff is hard work. All that armoring and masking that we do is exhausting. Yeah. It's really, really exhausting. And that will impact on our health in our 60s and 70s and 80s. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true because you can see it in generations that are ahead of us that have held on to, you know, I can see it and how it breaks down physically for them and mentally, but it also, you know, that their health is impacted majorly because they do all of this. They mask, they hold on, they strive for more, oh. they can't just let go. So yeah, I, I do see it. And you know what's really cool is that if you can take time to just step back and observe that happening in just a generation ahead of you, and you can see it for what it is, if you can just be mindful, and I'm not wagging the finger here, but <laughs> I just feel like I tell myself these things. I don't tell other people, maybe through a podcast, but I think, oh, so do I want my life to be like that? And yeah. what do I need to do to Absolutely. I do ensure, the same. Yeah. Yeah, I do I exactly do the same. And my my question is, what can I learn here? Mm. Yeah. What can I usefully learn from observing this older person's lived experience? Yeah. I always have believed that I can learn from other people's experience. You know how 
there's I think there's some saying I can't remember but it was something like you know you, you learn you learn from your own experience I'm like oh no hey no <laughs> I le- I can learn from people who are 10 years older than me like, I'll just observe and I'll go okay what's good here and what did what do I want to do that's different that's going to be you know better for me personally um I want to jump into your book uh very okay. exciting <laughs> it's yeah it's so cool um it's launched in the the US this week, last week, is uh-huh. that right? Yep. How exciting yep. for you, that's awesome. So it's called The Second Spring, The Self-Care Guide to Menopause. I often post uh, books in my uh, Instagram about books that I love that I'm reading and obviously to share with um, other viewers what else is out there. So this is another book I'll be posting about. How much of the timing of the book relates to your own personal experience and how did you get started on the book? Mm. I, well, I, I had been working, working with people in menopause for quite a while before I started writing the book and also in parallel process in my own menopause process. And I started writing really to understand what was happening. I ha- already had a beautiful training with Red School, uh, the menstrual educators in the UK, and they have their seasonal structure and I had my experience and I was witnessing other people's and holding other people in their experience. And with brain fog and a scrambly, <laughs> creative, trans, gentle, oh, what is that word? When I, you pop all over, my, my head pops all over the place. I'm always doing lots of things at once. Um, I want, really wanted to nail how the process of growth through menopause happens to create a psychological map that was easy to understand that wasn't full of woo woo yeah um that anybody can go oh yeah that so if i feel like that what do i need to do yeah um and i was greatly supported by my community um the womankind community where people very generously lent their um their experiences and the publishers, HarperCollins, put these women's, uh, her, this is my favorite bit of the book, they put these women's experiences in capital letters with masses of space around them, essentially centering these experiences as important. And that that is just such a gift, such a gift, because they're not, they're not um, <clears throat> the sort of super yoga people, they're just ordinary people who are exactly as you said, Tracy, uh, suffering with a load of shit and finding growth and finding the cool stuff you know yeah for sure um how is your menopause transition going for you and what's the most Mm -hmm. interesting thing that you've learned in maybe the last six months (laughs) well i'm post-menopause i'm in second spring which means uh, i last had a period I can't even remember now. It's not that interesting to me. You know, I'm so I'm so over it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I'm excited about this because I think I'm I'm late perimenopause now. Like I feel like, okay, you know, it'll come up to when I go, oh, I haven't had a period for a year. Um, and I'm not getting like horrendous symptoms now. They kind of come and go, and it is really based around lifestyle, you know, like if I do all the bad things, all the bad things come to me. <laughs> But um, yeah, I'm excited about where you're at. So yeah, mm. tell me about a second spring, something I can look sure. forward to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's something we can all look forward to. If you think of menopause as a, as a sort of hibernation period, like a winter. So in some sense, we're withdrawing into ourselves. And we, that, we may not be able to completely go and find a cave and go and live there for six months, which is probably what most people would like uh, to do. Just sounds leave really the good. house. <laughs> Yes, on a tropical exactly. island <laughs> on a tropical island yeah. by the beach you know yeah. nearly everybody wants this and what happens is that feeling starts to fade and we start to want to come out and connect again so when we come out it's a bit like you've been in the washing machine in the menopause washing machine for, on a spin cycle for quite a long time and it's like oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and you get kind of spat out on the beach and it takes quite a while to orientate yourself because the process of menopause has worked us, has has kind of kneaded us and squished us. And we that letting go thing, we've kind of let go of so much. It takes a little time to find out, well, 
who am I now? And what do I like? So this inevitably has involved me sort of running out and doing too much social stuff again. <laughs> Yeah. Being really social and going, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. And coming yeah. back and having to not not answer my phone for a week. Yeah. Take so this kind of, <laughs> Exactly. This is kind of going out and coming back. But what menopause brought, and because I slowed down, ping, that's the second like let go. Yeah. Slow down. <laughs> um, because I slowed down was a massive burst of creativity. And a real uh clarity about the important making that important in my life so the first thing i do well it's early today i haven't done it yet but the first thing i do is i is that for me it's writing at the moment so the first thing i do is write i'm making that the most important thing in my day because that's what sustains me that's what gives me meaning and purpose in my life mm. and just really making that important and i would never have done that in my 20s and 30s and 40s you know oh no you've got to go out a, you've got to hit I, I, the hit the ground running right <laughs> yeah I have, I have kids I have yeah. kids I have a partner I have a house I have I'm self-employed I have a couple of businesses you know it, it's not I have a lot going on mm. but I know that when all that tidal wave of like essentially quite tedious stuff mm. <laughs> I mean we get there is there's a lot of reward in there but there's a you know the admin can take over your life when I let that tidal wave wash me away, then I am washed away and that I have to forcibly center what is important to me. And I think that is that for me is second spring and that re that in that requires um, enormous uh, strength of mind and self worth and also vulnerability. So this this is the difference that we probably got to 50 with a lot yeah. of uh, with a lot of hard jaws gritted teeth and determination menopause gives us an opportunity if we choose to, to to surrender so that in our 60s and 70s and 80s we can show up with humility and with kindness towards ourselves and with love towards ourselves and that enables us to be present for other people yeah it's really interesting what you're saying because it does make me reflect about um woman that I experience in sort of the late 40s early 50s and quite often I, I personally feel and I'm going out on a limb here which we often do in podcasting <laughs> a lot of personal opinion there as well um, there is quite a sort of an angry woman syndrome that kind of envelops women at of that age and it oftentimes they're not 100% aware what's actually going on in their body. They're not sure how the hormones are impacting on what's, how it's making them feel, but also how they're responding generally in the work life and the home life and their relationships. And, you know, sometimes there's a breakdown of relationships in that time of life, mm -hmm. right? It's actually a, an incredibly um, confronting and scary moment. So when you talk about coming out of it, I think that is so exciting. Um, and it would be, I think, nice for listeners who are in the thick of it to, to know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And yeah, I, I'm really inspired by that. So I think one of the other things is when you do educate yourself or when someone does give you um, the right information about what's happening to your body, it does help you be kinder to yourself. It does help you sort of ease up a little bit. And that's a good place to start, you know, like mm. just going, oh, I'm not just a bitch. <laughs> you know, I am, there is a reason for this. And well, can, we, everyone, can, we speak to the, can we speak to the anger a bit, to the anger? Yeah, woman because sure, I, and, let's and do bring it. That, bring yeah. kindness I, into that, because I think that's really important. I, I was. I, I okay. definitely can think back to a couple of years when I had no idea what was happening and I put my foot in it, made a lot of mistakes, said and did some things that I actually, when I look back on it, I regret. Mm. Um, but I had no idea what was happening that was sort of causing sort of the uncharacteristic anger. So yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah. Please. So <laughs> one of one of the things that happens in, in perimenopause and menopause is that we become more sensitive and that that's that's to do with the shifting hormone picture 
And this sensitivity goes right across the board, across food, across smells, across taste, across senses, across sound, visuals. People have all kinds of new uh, allergies, all kinds of new sensitivities. And another kind of sensitivity is uh, towards emotions that we have been stashing for a long time. So in order to get to 45, you will have had, and if you're female, you will have had to suppress a lot of rage <laughs> at injustice, at being, you know, you'll be working twice as hard. If you're a woman of color, you'll be wor have been working four times as hard. Uh, you see injustice in the world, in your family, you know, and all the other things and whatever relationships you've been in. And, you know, there's, there's a lot to be angry about and we're not allowed to be angry. Well, you know, because that gets labeled as bitch, as you know, um, you know, if it was a bloke, angry, it would be... angry aging person, <laughs> angry aging person, right? That, and there you have the problem right there, all the negative judgments, right? Okay. But I would, I would suggest that this is old stuff coming up that is actually, you know, it's expressed unskillfully probably about, you know, it, towards your nearest and dearest very mm -hmm. often, but actually probably the trigger, the, the actual root cause of this stuff is actually legitimate. Yeah. And that your feelings have legitimate roots. It's just the expression that is unskillful. Wow. That's awesome. We, I feel like I'm in therapy right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, menopause yeah. is therapy. Menopause yeah. is offering offering us this chance for therapy. It's offering us this chance to oh, it's the, like this personalized bespoke spiritual growth package that we're given in midlife, and it hurts. Of course, it does because growth hurts. You know, yeah, <laughs> that's how it is. Kate, you got my brain going tick tock flip flop <laughs> right Good. now. So yeah, what Good. a what a very enlightening conversation to this stage already it's just it, you're actually making me think back to a few years and that that moment that I started to feel that rage and around simple things that I don't think I would have normally have said or done anything about but I I can see how there was um impact and compounding that um made me kind of lash out a bit so but I've been yeah, a lot 50, kinder now so yeah yeah 50 years of dropped towels I mean, yeah. you know, that's a lot of anger. And so how, so we're talking about kindness as well. So how can we, if, if a listener can relate to what we're saying and can relate to the drop towel or the, you know, the stacked up incidents of injustice or unfairness or where our feelings have been, where we've been gaslighted or where, where we haven't been allowed to express ourselves in the way that we'd like to. Can we bring kindness to that person at that time in our life? Mm. Can we bring compassion to the, you know, the 25 year old who was ignored, whose brilliant idea was stolen by some bloke in a meeting? Yeah. And really, yeah, we can and see I, it I, I all now. Slightly teary. Yeah, no, <laughs> look, I 100% know? know what you're saying. I mean, like, you, yeah, you're giving these examples and I'm, my mind goes straight there. And also mm. now I've, I'm, you know, stepping back and watching some of this play out for other people and have a huge amount of empathy and compassion and kindness for their situation. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's a good place to be, right? Mm. My, yeah, yeah, mindfully, yeah. And that, this, this bringing this kindness to uh, the incidents in our past mm. will change the expression of our anger. And of course, we have to do other stuff. We have to slow down. We have to eat well. We have to find new ways to find pleasure. Like, ding, that's another ding. I told you. I, th I think I need, every time I do a podcast, I need a bell. Give me the <laughs> ding. Yeah. Or a horn. <laughs> I don't know, something. New ways to find pleasure because our bodies are changing. Yeah. We need to, you know, as well as the nutrition and the movement and, you know, all the other stuff that we know about and eat like your grandmother and, yeah. Kate, this is awesome. I've got uh, a question that kind of relates to all the activity that's happening in the UK around the menopause space. And maybe because I went down the rabbit hole that I probably see a lot more of it than I used to, but I feel in the UK, there is a real ramp up for conversation. And some of it's like, 
<clears throat> pro-natural and pro-HRT. And I'm kind of thinking, well, it doesn't matter. At least we're talking. So with you in the UK, what do you personally consider are the most important changes needed to move the needle for women's health and specific to the menopause years? Oh, my goodness. Well, I think well, <laughs> like, where do we start? Where do you start? Like, where are you up to? I mean, you're probably well, ahead think, of us. Actually. Well, maybe maybe I'll, I'll say maybe I'll say what happened uh, for people who aren't living in the UK. What happened was yeah. was a television uh, presenter, a very well known lovely te <laughs> television presenter, Davina McCall. Yeah. And she made a program for Channel 4. Um, one so brave. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would question that. Right. I mean, okay. <laughs> Let, yeah. yeah, let's freaking talk about it then. <laughs> yeah, so but, yeah, carry so on. It's for, for some, it's for somebody in her in her profession to even acknowledge that you're over forty is a big deal because she stands to lose work. Mm. So in in that sense, it is brave. It should she, we should we should not have to be brave to talk yeah. about something that happens to half the population. And you can see, okay. This happens to half the population. The whole population is affected by this. And yet one television presenter is called so brave for doing it. It's like, you can see all the prejudice, all the fear, all the misogyny and all the shit of the patriarchal bollocks right there. I mean, why should you have to be brave to talk about something that happens in your body? To say anyway. Yeah, no, so, good statement, fair statement. Okay. Yep, yep. So we have, so there's a lot of fear. Let's say there's a lot of fear and prejudice about menopause. And she made two programs, one last year, one this year. And thank God for Davina because people are talking about it. And that's really what I would personally really love and I'm really enjoying seeing happening, people talking. Because the problem that we have as we've said this you know you have to be brave to talk about it the problem that we have with perimenopause and menopause is the shame mm. because it's the shame that keeps us quiet that means that we don't demand proper care from our doctors that means we don't say to each other oh shit i'm i'm really falling apart here and i don't know what's going on you know that mm. keeps us from owning our vulnerability and keeps us soldiering on when we should be asking for help and once we this process of dissolving the shame is the first step because we can because you know hallelujah it's a, it's on the it's on the bbc news it's a, you know it's in the headline in the newspapers and now what's happening which is which is just like it's just fascinating i mean it's, it's an it's an anthropo anthropological study all of itself please somebody with a phd write you know take notes and write about this because it's fascinating so what's happening yeah. is that um like every other area of women's health it's becoming um adversarial so um it's becoming split and becoming divisive you know yeah. just in the same way as you know breastfeeding and bottle feeding and the way you birth your yes. child yes and, and that's is, still a problem going on yeah well i think i think this is this is a human thing you know we talk about it yeah, and then the we have way. to <laughs> own own a piece of it or something like that and it's becoming yeah it's 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 really exploding but i think all of that and that i think that every all the, the the this kind of way of naming different parts of it is a sort of it's like it's like making a map of naming all the different parts and this is this is how hrt can help you and this is how exercise will help you and this is how your neurodiversity will be affected Mm. And this is this is how your chronic health issue will be affected, you know. And this for me, I'm I'm as you can tell, I'm interested in the psychological aspects and the spiritual aspects. This is how this is how your insides will be operating. And we're together we're making this this picture of the of the whole, but it will take a while. And and black black women's experience as well, you know. Mm. Yeah. And and uh, you know, ultimately it's it's a feminist issue yeah because the reason that we're suffering is because we've been working so hard and because we're not paid equally and because yeah. we don't have we don't have pen, correct pension provision you know yeah. that, when you come down to it so there's society with, problems that have compounded 
where we're at today and now our health is challenged, right? Yeah, so I, I think it's really fascinating that I remember when I was pregnant that I could access, you know, so many books. <laughs> and I think I did. I probably, when I cleaned out my cupboard after I'd finished having children, I had about 12 books on pregnancy and they kind of all have much of a muchness, but they speak from a different, you know, point of view and stuff. So um, I'm excited that you have contributed um, a piece of work, a piece of art for women to tap into and they'll be able to get your book. Um, is it on Amazon? Can we access yes. it through Amazon? You well, can get it through Amazon, right. Amazon, and uh, if you, if it's not, if it's expensive to ship it to wherever you are on Amazon, then it's on Audible, so you can, it's oh, internationally, so that's, you can, that's listen, awesome. you can listen to me banging on. I think I'd like also like to say that within the book, it's not just the psychological map, There's, I did everything. <laughs> It grew, yeah. it grew, it grew, it grew. As so there's it all does. the stuff about food, yeah. there's all the stuff about exercise, there's yeah. all the stuff about work, there's all the stuff about HRT, there's, there's everything in there. But this, at the center of it is a beautiful practice, which is on audio as well as written, which will take you into the under the underlying dynamic of what is going on for you. Yeah. It's called a medicine circle. And it's also accompanied by a load of beautiful yoga nidras that will help you to rest beautiful i love it i uh, i had noticed that you do have some yoga nidras on your website yeah. so yeah, yeah thank yeah. you so much for popping those on there people can tap into it and i will share how to find you um in the show notes so thank you so much kate thank you tracy it's been a blast